Today we're going to be doing an unboxing review of the TP-Link AX11000. Huge shout out to TP-Link for sending me this router for review. So to start off we're going to look at the front of the box. As you can tell the router looks very very gamer like. It's got a crap ton of Wi-Fi antennas on it. And on the front of the box it says it comes with game acceleration, a game dashboard, 10 gigabit per second Wi-Fi speeds, 1.8 gigahertz quad-core CPU, and a 2.5 gigabits per second WAN port. And then on the back here, it's just comparing the AX11000 to the AC5400. As you can clearly tell here, it is a much, much improved router over that one, as well as four times greater capacity to link more devices. Believe me, you probably won't be able to slow this router down at all. Accelerate gaming connections, so you can prioritize gaming connections to make sure you get that nice, nice, sweet, low ping as possible. Keep element secure. It's advertising some virus protection thing. I'm not a big fan of it. Windows Defender is fine for that stuff. You don't really need one for the router scape. Unless you're being really stupid about it, then yes. And then the Know Your Network. You can see game statistics and exactly what your router is doing, how hard it's getting hit, and all that jazz. So now, let's get to unboxing it. Got my handy dandy trusty box cutter knife that I borrowed from a friend, Milwaukee brand. It's very sharp. I already just nicked myself there. Remove the glorious shrink wrap off of it. And I just chuck it off to the side. Don't need that crap anymore. So as you see, the router here is nicely packaged. It looks brand spanking new. It comes with a short Ethernet cable. Would've been nice if it was a bit longer as Ethernet cables are pretty cheap nowadays as it is. And then this is a massive power brick for a router. This thing looks huge. It's like it could power a laptop. That's how big it is. And then the piece de resistance and one bit because there's more junk down here. You got some documentation, no one ever reads it anymore. Quick installation guide, no one reads that. A TP-Link Wi-Fi info card. This is handy to have, so in case you happen to not be near the router or you have a picture on your phone, just keep this card on you and then you have the information. As long as you don't change anything in the, in the admin menu. And then it has here that you might run into some issues if you can't connect to it wirelessly, you might have to update the driver. Another quick installation guide. And we get to assemble the antennas on the router. That's going to be fun. And here's the behemoth of the power cord for the big, huge power brick. So let's just remove that plastic wrap for now. So now let's unwrap the plastic from the router. Oh, this router is heavy. Nice big square piece. Oh, it's got eight LAN ports on the back here. One LAN port and the RAM port can do 2.5 gigabits per second. Got power on off switch there. Not much else to say other than you can mount this to the wall if you want. It does have four uh, screw holding holes on the back here. Now let's install the Wi-Fi antennas individually as they're all nicely individually wrapped. Like this is a big antenna like it's as big as the box cutter knife. <laughs> so traditionally, Wi-Fi antennas, you have to screw them into the gold plate connector, but this one you just slide right on and if you want to remove it, slides right back off. You have to do it eight times because it comes with eight antennas. This thing will stick out like a sore thumb if you have it anywhere but in the basement. Okay. Now that we've got all the Wi-Fi antennas connected, let's go and power it up quickly with a just to see if there's any fancy special lights on it. And since it is a gamer router, 10 bucks says it's gonna be something fancy. And I'll toss over the cord to my man behind the camera, see if he can catch it. It is a bit short on that one. <laughs> he could not catch it. 
I'll have to toss the brick at him as well. Not a little brick. I won't kill him. This brick. And the power port's on the back here. So now go ahead the power button. You can see a nice shiny white line on here. And then for the lights, pulsing orange means the system is starting up. Solid white means the router is working normally. Solid red, there is no internet connection. Solid orange, the router is connected to the internet but the Wi-Fi is off. Pulsing white, the firmware is being upgraded. WPS connection is being established or the router is being reset. And then for the three buttons on the front, you got a WPS button, you got a Wi-Fi button to turn the Wi-Fi on and off, and you got an LED button to turn the LED light on the router on and off. And you happen to have the router in a bedroom and the white light would be annoying to try and sleep with on. So now here's a look at the admin menu. It's going to ask you to change the password. It's always highly recommended changing the password just because you never know if someone manages to crack the password that's a sticker on it. So now that we've got the password in, I'm just going to ignore Chrome for saying to save it. It's going to ask you for your time zone. I live in mountain time, so I'm going to select mountain time. So I'll select the mountain time, and it's going to ask me if you have dynamic IP static. Nine out of 10 times is dynamic. And then you can change the MAC address if you want to, or you should just use the default. It's nice to have that option, just in case your Mac just might be banned for someone secondhand router. And then here you can change your network names. Um, so pretty basic on that one. And then you do have the two 5G connections, one for gaming, one for regular stuff, and then the standard 2.4. And then I'll ask you to do a connection test. Pretty self-explanatory. It's making sure that it's connected to the internet. Then I was asking for a firmware upgrade. You click on upgrade and then off to the races. Make sure to not unplug it during this because that's the fastest way to brick a router. And once the router is fully rebooted and you have an internet connection back, it's going to ask you to sign in again. You have an option for the cloud service. I wouldn't bother with it. You don't really need it. As well, you can have a QR code so people can log into your Wi-Fi much easier if you happen to have a very, very complicated password. That is a very nice touch. And then here it shows the internet, how many clients are on there, the router. You can do an internet speed test right on the router itself. And you got to 2.4 gigahertz, your 1.5G and the 5G gaming completely separated. And then I'm going to do a speed test. I do have gigabit internet, but when I do a speed test off of the router, it usually ends up being higher, most likely because it can't, I can't choose the server, so it might, pick, might be picking a server that's a bit farther away. Now with that test done, the download matches, the upload, not so much. The one thing I do have a gripe with, it says it's good for 1080p. That should be updated a bit, because especially in this day and age, you should have different sections for 4K, 8K etc so if you go into advanced it's pretty much like every other router you got options galore you got your tp link your wireless your usb your port forwarding security vpn server everything that a basic good router comes with then if you click on wireless you can see all your wireless settings what the password is change the name enable smart connect there's plenty of options in this router and for the price i really hope so and then you have your game center, so you can see the network traffic that's currently going through, the performance of the router itself. So in the game center, you got a dashboard, you got a game accelerator. So if you want to try and reduce your ping and it happens to be a local issue, that's the problem. Then you can easily solve it here. Your mileage may vary on this one because you might have a bad cable or your computer's not good enough for a certain game. There's a lot of variables in this one, but at least you know from the router's viewpoint, what your ping should be, roughly, if it happens to be in local based. If it's connected to a server, well. And then for antivirus, you do have an option for a content filter prevention system. Like in case if you have your own kids on the internet, they don't know any better. And you have a smart game assistant, so you can hook up to your Alexa and then tell Alexa to change settings on the router. Pretty nice. I would never use it myself, but that's just me. You can connect to OpenVPN. And then there's the game diagnostics and port forwarding to get, it. And again, testing the ping and everything. It is a gaming router after all. Now that the unboxing is done, the ultimate question is, should you buy this router? 
The router currently retails in Canada for $550. It is definitely not cheap. If you have a minimum of 15 5 GHz Wi-Fi devices in one room, then you should definitely take a look at this router. But if you're looking to expand your Wi-Fi network, look into a simple Wi-Fi extender sold by various other companies for a quarter of the price. Your ISP might even offer it for free as my ISP did that just for me. If running out of LAN ports is a problem, then you can look into a network switch for that. I currently run a few for the past 3 years and have yet to run into any noticeable issues with them. For those that are wondering, they are D-Link 8 port and 32 port switches and have always been on and they are reasonably priced and do the job just fine. Now if you're looking to spend the money for the quote unquote gaming features of this router, I would highly recommend thinking again. You can get software nowadays to help reduce ping in various ways and majority of routers come with a QoS quality of service that allows you to set parameters to allow for important stuff in this case, gaming, to have higher priority than other systems. For my own two cents, I would never own this router. It sticks out way too much and for the price, there are much cheaper options out there that give you more streamlined looks and won't hurt the wallet as much. Thanks for watching the review of the TP-Link AX11000. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested in this router.